Hey, what's going on? Just adjusting my hat as I can watch myself on my camera while I'm doing a quick Facebook Live. Talk to you today. This week, doing a quick Facebook Live about stride length. So I put in the comments um, things like overstriding and trying to get too much reach or too little if you're getting too choppy. Um, it is one of the running dynamics that a Garmin like a FootPod or HRM strap that is uh, newer uh, will capture that kind of data so you can go and review it either during your run, you can uh, display it, or you can go post-run and see it on your watch, or you can go into Garmin Connect and get all kinds of information out of there. So I'm kind of diving in just, you know, just the little top layer of the onion uh, on the stride length because I think it does carry some good information, especially uh, if you're out there and you're, you're running and you're adding distance. You know, we're at uh, April 27th right now. Our main Tulsa is right around the corner. And as everybody's all ramping up to their 18, 20 mile runs and everything, you're finding that you're getting uh, foot pain, uh, you know, lower leg pain and stuff like that. Um, it might be time to say, hey, make sure that all the running dynamics and your functional f uh, fitness and strength and everything is, is on point because um, there's a few more weeks of probably higher load. And if you're not checking out, maybe stride length is a possibility of causing some issues. Um, maybe it's something to look at. So with that. We're going to jump in stride length and be quick as possible. This is quick Facebook live tips. Um, the, the, the stride length as Garmin or uh, other foot pods and everything measure it is the distance traveled per step. So that's just the distance you cover for when your foot leaves the ground until it, when it hits uh, when, you, when you land to complete your stride length. So it, it, hopefully it's pretty straightforward. Um, you, like I said, you can view it during your run. You can set it on your watch, one of the data screens or you can look at a post run just to kind of find the information if you want it. Again, you have to be either wearing a sensor that is a, a run pod. I said I probably said foot pod, but foot pod is a little bit different. Run pod is what straps your waist. It's just a little bitty, you know, I wish I had become prepared and had a, a little thing put with me, but it's just a little bitty pod with a little clip you put on your waistband and it just captures a lot of information that maybe your watch is not getting. And then, or you could use an HRM strap um, that Garmin makes. I think there's a few other people out there to make them, um, but it'll record this information too. So you can record that, you can look at it at your watch, and then you can download it, and you can pick it apart in Garmin Connect all day long. There's tons of information you can get out of there. Um, the factors that affect stride length, it's going to be your body structure. So, you know, not everybody is made the same. Not everybody is, is perfectly aligned. Not everybody is perfectly symmetrical. Um, there's lots of different differences that are going to be from person to person that causes uh, especially when you're thinking about body structure, that's going to affect your stride length. Um, you know, it just be, you know, if you got injuries or something like that and you got low range of motion on one side, that's going to affect your stride length and it's going to show up in this metric if you've got it. Um, body strength. So if you've got that running endurance or if you don't have that running endurance, that's going to show up there. And then flexibility, uh, because you have to be able to get that full stride. If you can't get your leg up to get the high knee, to get the run, to get that stride length out there, you're not going to be able to get as much stride length maybe as you're looking for or as little. It just depends. So those are the, the main factors. Body body structure, strength, and flexibility is going to be what's affecting your stride length the most. So that's kind of the big factors if you look at it. So the key factor is there's going to be a difference from side to side. Like I said, everybody's not symmetric. So there's going to be a little bit of difference. But when it starts getting drastic, um, you know, when you're looking at inches or millimeters or centimeters, you know, a couple millimeters is fine. A couple centimeters, you're kind of okay. But once you get in like five, six, seven centimeters difference, um, that's where you're looking at a possibility of a severe imbalance from side to side that could result over time. If you're training for half or a full or, or even an Olympic distance, uh, that could rear its ugly head and cause an injury later because one side of the body is getting more impact than the other because it's getting a longer distance in the air, creating more force when you land, all that kind of good fun stuff. So if there's a drastic difference from side to side, you need to pay attention to that. So the things you could do is you can work body strength, functional strength. You can work uh, mobility strength, uh, one one uh, sided you know leg raises and stuff like that. Um, so I've got tons of exercises out there. If you want one of my plans or if I coached you before, there's tons. I mean, you can always Google on YouTube. Um, you can put it in the comments. I'll I'll attach something if you're kind of questioning that. Um, so you can work on strength. Uh, tons of things you could be doing for that. Um, make sure when you're doing your runs, you're getting a good dynamic warm up. So that's not static. I don't like to see static stretching before we warm up because you're elongating the tendons and everything and then you go out and run on it. I like to see a dynamic warm up where you're moving and, and you're doing a little bit of stretching, getting all the muscles all warmed up and getting the blood flow going 
like you're not overextending things and getting everything loosey-goosey before you go for a run. But after you're done, if you're not going immediately into another workout or something, or even if you're going to you know your home office, you're going to sit in the chair the rest of the afternoon, get a good static cool down because that will affect your flexibility. So if you're not getting a good dynamic warm-up, not getting a good static stretch afterwards, uh, you're going to destroy your flexibility and you're going to end up kind of, you know, if we're sitting in chairs all day, you're going to end up kind of crouched over. So when you're out there, you're not opened up fully. You're going to be kind of bent at the waist because that's how you spend your day. And after you've done running, if you haven't stretched your, yourself out properly, it's just because you're going to kind of atrophy in that position. So be flexible. And the last point I want to bring is uh, when you're doing your run, form does matter. Uh, I always preach kind of lean at the ankles, keeping them forward lean. Make sure gravity is helping you do the run and a slight knee bend on landing. So if you're landing straight legged, you're putting the brakes on and you're putting tons of force into your knee. And that's kind of that can also result in the overstriding to where you're getting excessive lengths of stride. Um, there's, I hate to say that there's a rule of thumb for how long your stride length should be. Everybody's different. I'm six foot tall. There's people out there five foot four or, or less, you know, four foot eight, whatever. Um, kids, adults, teenagers, whatever. Um, everybody's different. It's just hard to say uh, what percentage or anything. But the key factor is you don't want to be straight leg when you hit the ground. And when you push off, you want to be straight leg because you want to be pushing off the ground as much as possible with a forward lean. That will help you keep your momentum going. But as, like I said, when you come down and hit the ground, if you're straight legged, you know, if your knee looks like that and it's not bent when you kind of hit the ground, can't do it with my arm very good, but you want a little bit of a slight bend so it's kind of like a spring action because if you're doing it and you're hitting the ground to straight leg, um, that's kind of generally kind of an overstride situation. Uh, so you want to be looking at the form is my, my main point of that is you want to be looking at your run form as another factor that's going to affect your stride length and kind of come out in all these different factors. So again, that is a quick... Uh, and I'm sweating because we are, we went straight from winter last week to snow to 85 degrees this week. You need to turn on the air conditioner. It is all kinds of warm in Kansas City. So happy training out there. If you got any more questions about stride link, put them in the comments. Uh, send me a message, do anything you need to. And happy training out there. We'll see you on race day.